Let P be a polyhedron in Rn. A non-empty phase F of P is a minimal phase of P if F does not properly contain another non-empty phase of P. Let's look at a couple of examples. Suppose that P is given by these inequalities, then this is a sketch of P. So this point here is 1, 0, and this point here is 0, 1. Now, this over here is a phase of P, but it's not a minimal phase of P because this point here is a phase of P that is contained in this green phase. But there's no non-empty phase of P properly contained in this blue phase. So this is a minimal phase of P. And so is this. So for this polyhedron P, there are two minimal phases. Now suppose that the polyhedron is given by this. And here is a sketch of Q. Notice that there's only one minimal phase of Q, and that phase is this here. If we go back to the picture here, we see that each of these blue minimal phase is the intersection of two lines. And over here, the minimal phase is a line. It turns out that every minimal phase of a polyhedron is an affine subspace. But of course, not every phase is an affine subspace, as this green phase shows here. So minimal phases are somewhat special. And so we have the following theorem. If P is given by the set of x satisfying AX greater than or equal to B, then every minimal phase of P is given by the set of x satisfying A prime x equals B prime. For some subsystem, A prime x greater than or equal to B prime of AX greater than or equal to B, where A prime has rank equal to the rank of A. And so this here means that every minimal phase is an affine subspace. And from this theorem, we see that all minimal phases have the same dimension because of this. Recall that the dimension of affine subspace defined this way is equal to the nullity of the matrix A prime. And one can prove from this theorem the following corollary. If F is a phase of P and F prime is a minimal phase of F, then F prime is also a minimal phase of P. Let's go back to the previous examples and see how this theorem applies. For this minimal phase here, it's a solution of setting this inequality and this inequality to equalities. And for this minimal phase over here, it's a solution of setting this inequality to equality and this inequality to equality. And over here, the minimal phase is simply obtained by setting this inequality to equality. There are a couple of useful facts that also follow from this theorem. If you pick an element which happens to be an extreme point of P, then the set consisting of that element is a minimal phase, and the converse of that is also true. The other fact is, if minimizing C transpose X subject to X is in P has an optimal solution, then it has an optimal solution in a minimal phase of P. And the reason is very simple. If we take Q to be the set of X in P satisfying C transpose X equals V, where V is the optimal value, then Q is a phase of P. But not only that, Q is the set of all optimal solutions to P. Now, if we let Q prime be a minimal phase of Q, then by the corollary here, Q prime is a minimal phase of P, and every element in Q prime is an optimal solution, because Q is the set of optimal solutions. So if we combine this with what we have up here, we see that if P is pointed, and if this has an optimal solution, then there's going to be an optimal solution that is an extreme point of P. And since minimal phases are affine subspaces, and an affine subspace is bounded only if it is a single point, we see that the minimal phases of a polytope must have dimension zero. And so they must be singletons. And these singletons, according to this fact here, must be extreme points of P. And so we can abuse our language and say that the extreme points of a polytope P are the minimal phases of P.